Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveYourSuccess.com. Uh, today I want to talk about the importance of getting your uh, production employees to operate like surgeons. Now, um, if you think about a surgeon, a surgeon is always operating against time. They've got all the tools they need within close proximity to where they're working. They waste no time whatsoever fumbling about trying to get the best of what they need and everything else. So it's the same kind of mindset, mindset we want with, with our with, uh, um, production employee. It's the same kind of mindset you should have with your management. When it comes to manufacturing, you know, your production employees have to operate like surgeons. So what typically happens when I start off with a, uh, with a new customer is I go in and I start talking to them about the importance of operating like a surgeon. And I talk to them about cycle times and the relationship between, you know, cycle times from one production work cell to the next, transit times. And invariably, nine times out of ten, all the time, pretty much, I get the answer of, yeah, Ian, we know what the cycle times are. Our ERP system tells us that's not what our issues are. And, and right away I know what their issues are. Their issues is they don't know how to track cycle, to, cycle times. So my answer to someone who says we know what the cycle times are, our ERP system tells us, is to say to them, that's great. I'm happy that you know what the cycle times are because your ERP system can tell you, but they cannot tell you what they should be. And there is not a single ERP system anywhere in the world, an ERP, MRP, I don't care what you call it, there is not a single system anywhere in the world that is intuitive enough to tell you what they should be. All it can tell you is what they are right now. In order to lower them and to do something about your cycle times, you've got to see production happen in person. Okay? So I've talked a couple of times about these things in the past, about you know analyzing cycle times from one work cell to the next, and analyzing productivity rates. And I always start from analyzing productivity rates and, and cycle times at an individual production work cell because that's where the work stoppages happen. If you think about a product being manufactured, it starts from one area and moves to another before it moves to the next, to the next, to the next cell. Um, if there's a problem at each one of these cells, it, it just creates a backlog in the process. So if you want to analyze cycle times, get to the point, get to where work's being done. So the first step that I usually start off with customers is to analyze productivity rates um, for specific work cells. Okay? So we're going to start off number one, productivity rates. Now, I will go through a very quick analysis of a productivity rate that I did for a customer recently. It's very simple and very straightforward. I've actually got another video about this uh, that I've posted on my, on my blog. Very quickly, this is how you do it. I actually had a customer who couldn't reconcile while they were only getting 18 units out of an 8-hour work shift. Very simple. No one works a full 8 hours. You have 8 hours. Okay, you're going to take one hour off for lunch. This is the particular example is one hour for lunch. Minus two times 15 minute breaks. One in the morning, one in the afternoon. Leaves you with six and a half hours of available work time. Okay, so right away, no one's working the full eight hours. At most, even if they could, they can't. But if they could, they would work of six and a half hours. Okay, but we all know nobody's a robot. So what happened is in this particular workstation, I did this analysis over several weeks. And to be quite honest with you, in analyzing the cycle times, we found out um, in this analysis that they averaged approximately 135 minutes of lost time each eight-hour work shift. Now, there's a lot of reasons why this happened. Uh, a couple of the reasons were bill of material issues. Um, Assembly, assembly outlines, so assembly outlines. Um, we had uh, work order issues. Anyways, bottom line, on average, five days of the week is about 135 minutes of lost time. All kinds of issues that we, we encountered in this particular workstation. If you convert this six and a half hours into uh, minutes, six and a half hours is actually 390 minutes. Okay, so. No one works eight hours. You can take an hour off, take two 15 minute breaks, six and a half hours, convert it into minutes, it's 390 minutes. Okay? We encountered an average of 135 minutes per work shift of downtime. You take that off, you're left with 255 minutes or four hours and 25 minutes of actual work time. So you got 255 minutes where work was actually being done. This particular product had a cycle time of 15 minutes. Okay? And if you take this 255 and divide it by this 15, so 255 divided by 15, let me just correct that. 255 divided by 15, 
you actually get the 17 or 18 units that this company was complaining they were only getting out of an eight hour shift. Bottom line is they were getting 17 to 18 units out of um, basically a four hours and 25 minute shift. Okay? First step, operating like surgeons, productivity rate analysis at the work cell. Okay? Second step is reduce downtime. Okay? Cycle time is 15 minutes. There's a lot of issues right here that pertain to um, lost time, wasted time, work stoppages. Now, if you attack this 15 minutes and start to systematically eliminate some of these root causes that you've got right here, you'll bring that cycle time down. So in this particular case, we went from 15 minutes down to, I think it was like 14.25. The third step here is if you want to track your cycle times um, through your ERP system, or if you want to be able to turn around to someone like myself and say, you know, we know what our cycle times is, you should only say that after you've gotten to this point, all right? So bottom line is your cycle times, step number three, equals your ERP times. They are your benchmark times. And that means that if you want to be able to say that you know exactly how low your cycle times are in a given workstation or across the production floor, you've got to be able to figure out your productivity rate, eight hours minus an hour minus two 15-minute breaks, six and a half hours, convert it into minutes, track the lost time, the causes. You get 390 minutes, particular example, minus 135, wasted time, 255 in terms of actual work time. So this company was getting 18 units, not out of eight hours, but four hours and 25 minutes. We then attacked the causes here systematically over a couple of weeks, brought it down to 14.25, and that's considerable, that's a lot. And then we used this 14.25 as the time that we tracked all of our future variances on in terms of their ERP system. So to be quite honest with you, when I have a customer of mine tell me that they know what the uh, cycle times are because their ERP system tells them, especially at the beginning of a project, it's music to my ears. So that's pretty much it. Get your guys operating like surgeons. Take care. Ian Johnson, DriveYourSuccess.com.